Harvey had strength, but we have power. Synergy Radio 1480 will continue to bring you all the voices you know and love. Are you ready for talk that inspires change? Good morning. You are here at the Business Breakfast Talk Show, and we are going to be talking today about how to beef up that business plan. But before we get started, I am your host, Tiffany A. Washington, and we want to thank you for joining us here at KLVL 1480 for the Business Breakfast Talk Show, where you get the most important meal of the day. We're serving up success strategies and system side dishes each Saturday here on Synergy Radio. So grab your coffee and your croissant, and let's get down to business. So we're your Business Breakfast host. And I'm Tiffany Washington, and this is Joy (laughs) Lacey. So you all see a new face here today, (laughs) Miss Joy. (laughs) Welcome, welcome, welcome. And she is going to be a new face here with me, yours truly. So we'll be doing this together, right? Yes, absolutely. tell us a little bit about yourself. So uh, again, my name is Joy Hutton Lacey, and I hail from the great city of Chicago. Yes. Um, But I am now in the great city of Houston, and I um, have a legal nonprofit education background, so I bring a number of resources here to you on the radio. And I'm excited to get down to business and talk about helping you start, run your business, deal with existing challenges in the workplace. And, you know, we're going to give it to you real. We're going to give it to you real. (laughs) So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. They know a little bit about who you are. I introduced myself last week. However, last week we talked about clarity, clarity in your business and the reason why clarity is so important so that you can make sure that you stay on target for all of your business goals. And so we're parlaying that conversation from last week into this week, how to build a solid business plan. Now, we all know that business plans can be quite boring, right? Right. Absolutely. (laughs) But we want to talk to you about how to make sure that that plan is in place so that you can be successful. So let's talk a little bit about the mistakes that can be made when you move into a business plan. uh, Excuse me, move into a business without a plan. Right. What does that look like? Because before getting to writing the plan, Mm -hmm. you actually have to have a plan for your business. Exactly. And so we all know that a good idea is not always a viable one. Yes, yes. So it could be a good idea in your mind, but then when you get out there and you test it, exactly, it it might not be so great. Exactly. So like, what are some (laughs) examples of that? So you know how I may think that I have the best sweet potato pie ever? Yes. I mean, I do make a pretty good sweet potato okay. pie. All right. Oh, we're going to have to test that this Thanksgiving because I, I can put my foot in it, too. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> we got some competition. Yeah. Some healthy competition. Okay, maybe I'll stick with the banana pudding then. Okay, I'll let you have it. But I do pretty good on that, too. But, <laughs> Tiffany, I know that I'm not going to open up a storefront right. for my sweet potato pie or mm-hmm. my banana pudding. Some things are best as a side gig or mm-hmm. because that's just not my, that's just not my calling. Right. And you have to be realistic about what your skills are, where you're creative, where, uh, I mean, and you have to have the business acumen to run a business. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my sweet potato pie may not look good on the shelf at a store. Right. Might look good at home. Exactly. (laughs) It's best left as one of those homemade dishes. Right. Because you don't have the skill Right. To make it look like the cake boss, for example. Exactly. You know, yeah, so that's not I, my call. You know, I see a <laughs> lot of people putting their products out there, but they have not acquired the necessary skill. It might taste right. good, but the visual aesthetic Absolutely. is also important, right? right? Exactly. And so, and that not just for your pies, but for <laughs> other aspects of business right. as well. Visually, how how are you presenting it? Exactly. You know, and even starting something as simple as a bakery item, you have to think about the cost associated with running a business Mm -hmm. how are you going to market yourself how are you going to advertise yourself and people don't really think about that they say oh I have an idea I want to run a business but entrepreneurship is not for everybody it's okay to just make something a side gig Um, and you just have to be realistic about where you're trying to go with this you know have goals in place and so once you get past that idea phase Mm -hmm. obviously you know we get to the business plan right okay so with the business plan 
plan right before we get ready to start writing it. We were talking about different mistakes you can make. Right. Right. So one of the things that can happen is you can become <clears throat> very unfocused if you don't mm-hmm. have a business plan. Right. And when you are unfocused, then your audience becomes uh, discombobulated, if you will. Exactly. <laughs> they become <laughs> unclear about what, what your doing. goal and mission is. Right. So. Sometimes people, when they don't have a plan, they also follow what others are doing. Right. You know, they see all of the flashing lights and um, they get the shiny object syndrome. Right. And, you know, they're just going after whatever they see other people doing that works for them. Exactly. Right. But your plan should support what is healthy for your business. Right. And it shouldn't be a complete copycat. Mm -hmm. of someone else's business now there are plenty of businesses out here who do the same thing right but what is your angle exactly how how are you presenting it in a way that is unique and different and desirable to those who are going to consume your product because essentially the business plans is the business plan is your roadmap right to success absolutely and some people may wonder well why you know why do I need a business plan Mm -hmm. why do I have to write a business plan why can't I just run my business on thought and ideas right and I see the vision Mm -hmm. but I know where I'm going with this business why do I have to have a business plan so even though it's good to have it in your head and be Mm -hmm. clear in your head it also needs to be clear on paper so we're going to dig into that a little bit so before you write your business plan you have to make sure that you've tested it exactly you know and so we hit on that just a little bit but do you have a target audience Mm -hmm. is the market that you're trying to operate in oversaturated or do they need another (laughs) one of you or how is it going to be a unique you Absolutely. and then after you figure that out and you do your research then you start to uh, create an initial plan right you test your plan and then you res- review the results right. of that plan right? right because when you review the results that means that you're making tweaks and edits to what's already existing and at that point <laughs> <laughs> then you get then the- you get to the plan right <laughs> exactly <laughs> And I think, you know, and what I was saying about being realistic about your idea, you, you know, sometimes people get into businesses where they do not have any skill set. Yeah. And so that is making it even more difficult mm-hmm. to actually run a business. So why, how are you going to build a plan off of something that you have no knowledge of or very right. little knowledge of? Right, exactly. Um, and one of the things that I think is important to note about people like that is you you don't have the clarity and right. that goes back to our first business uh, excuse me our first show our first episode if mm-hmm. you don't have the clarity about it then it's probably best that you just set it aside and you leave it alone exactly yeah so um what about the the paperwork let's get into that let's start talking a little bit about that mm-hmm. business plan so after you figure out what you don't know, because you don't know what you don't know, exactly. right? Exactly. And we hear then, that a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> then let's start talking about what the components of a business plan are. We'll we'll get started before right. we get ready to go to break. So, okay. yeah, what are the components of a business plan? Let's start talking about it. So, one, you know, one of the biggest things you'll hear, you need an executive summary. Mm -hmm. But what goes into the executive summary? First and foremost, you have to identify, excuse me, you have to identify what problem are you trying to solve? Mm -hmm. Or do you have a problem that you're trying to solve? (laughs) (laughs) Because you might think you have a problem that, that, that you're trying to solve, but then someone else will be like, um... No, that's not it. Sorry. Yeah, no one has that problem. But, but <laughs> how do people find out if it's a real problem, though? Well, it goes back to testing your, your market, you know, yeah. talking to people because you can't keep this idea in your head and then try to flush it out on your, on your own. You have to talk to people. Right. So, you know, for example, do we, when we're just talking about bakery items, do people actually eat sweet potato pie? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Exactly. And mm-hmm. so are you, you know, what is your problem? What is And what is the solution? Mm -hmm. that you are offering for your business because we want to make sure that is also um, something that's viable. Are you offering a real solution to the problem? Right, absolutely. So after you figure out whether or not you're offering a real solution, Mm -hmm. you put that into the executive summary. Yes. So talk to us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so you have that in the executive summary and then once you figure out 
I have a real problem and I have a real solution, then you need to go to your market. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to see what your market size for this uh, is for this particular industry and and test that out. You know, um, so you have to take that step. And then from there, um, do you have competition in this space? Right. Because if you do have competition in this space, then you have to figure out, well, what makes me better? Right. You know, because if I'm going to do this, mm -hmm. I'm going to come out swinging. Right. You know, I'm not going to have to do this. I mm -hmm. need to know who my competitors are and what can I do differently from them. Right. And then why does someone want to patronize my business over the next person? So we'll get more into that after our break. All right. We'll be right back. You're listening to Synergy Radio Network. The past year, KYND became one of the fastest growing radio stations in the country. Well, we've outgrown our old home, and we're ready to take it to the next level. We are now Synergy Radio. More power. All day, all night. Wait, what? Synergy Radio 1480, powered 24-7. Can I tell you how excited we are? We are powerful talk that inspires change. That's where you're supposed to go. That's where you're supposed to go. With transformational coaches ready to help you get to the next level. You will find some things that speak to your soul. Synergy Radio 1480 will continue to bring you all the voices you know and love. Gotta have you here on the Alonda Adams Morning Show. This is Rashawn McDonald. Welcome to The Journey with Tiffany Smith. Hello, my name is Les Brown. I'm Paris Ely. We're your hosts, Tristan and Cece. This is Oscar Hines. Hey, it's Zakia Larry Live. This is Nicole R. Coleman. Hey, and I'm Tasha Evans. This is the reality check, Dr. Dr. D. Yvonne Young. Welcome back to the show. I'd like to shout out our live studio audience once again. <laughs> Tune in every day, 1480 AM. Are you ready for talk that inspires change? Tune in to Synergy Radio 1480 in your car, in your house, or on any mobile device at SynergyRadioNetwork.com. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Are you a homeowner who... Network Radio, where it all comes together. Okay, so we left off at why us or why me? Why would someone want to patronize your business? You have to think about the things that make you unique Absolutely. from the next person mm -hmm. because you do not want to reinvent, reinvent the wheel. Right. And you have to make sure that you're standing out from your competition, right? Right, absolutely. So I'm just thinking of, uh, you know, simple business practices that you have to put in place in order to stand out. Um, so in addition to doing all of the things we did discuss, like doing your, your research, um, what, what other avenues are not being taken advantage of. So you kind of have to find the loopholes mm -hmm. in what's already existing mm -hmm. and create a space for yourself there. Absolutely. So it's almost like finding a new niche for yourself mm -hmm. inside of your niche. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, so. you go into the grocery store, for example, you, example, you see 
20 different types of toilet paper. Yes. <laughs> well, oh my goodness. What, what, what stands out to me? I mean, I want the one that has the double rolls. Exactly. And the, you know, I want the two-ply. Right, the two-ply. And, and sometimes I might have a cute design on exactly. it. Exactly. There's I'm a, a girl. difference. Yeah, There's a difference. definitely a difference. And so Charmin or whoever else has made themselves <laughs> stand out from the next person. Right, right. So, yeah. So thinking about what makes you stand out. But anyway, no one wants to hear about toilet paper. Exactly. Right? You want to hear about your business. Exactly. So, so. standing out from your competition. And out, once you have figured that out, you have to think about the financials. People forget about that. You yeah. know, I mentioned earlier looking at the real costs associated um, with your business. There are lots of templates out there to give you a framework, and then you can expand upon that based on your uh, specific needs. Absolutely. Um, you have to think about the the startup costs mm -hmm. for your business, and not only that, you know, what is your projected revenue going to be? Uh, people, you know, people want to see that written out in your business plan. Absolutely. And so when you're writing about uh, the financials in your business, um, depending on which type of business plan you decide to go with and uh, right now we're talking about the traditional business plan. right exactly they're going to want to see copies right of your financial records what have you already done mm -hmm. and when when i say they we're talking about uh investors exactly people who want to know what's going to happen step by step with your business right are you fiscally responsible mm -hmm. with what you've already done right um are you putting your money in targeted places that are going to help you to experience rapid amounts of growth in certain areas? Right. They're going to be looking for all of that when they go through your financials. And do you have the cash flow to actually run a business? Because yes. Because they're looking at that, too. They want to see your past tax returns, right. especially for startups. And, you know, there's this misconception I think you know when you're when you're trying to get financing from banks they do not really recognize you as a business unless you've been in business for two years mm, that's and, a good point and so you know do you have a track record that you've already built because some people say they give startups money but mm -hmm. really what is a startup and that's a conversation we can have later but if you do not have, um, you know, existing revenue, they're looking at your past financial records, your tax mm -hmm. returns. Um, are you a good um, financial planner? You know, have you saved money to start this business? Have you put your own blood, sweat, and tears into it? Because why would I give you money if you haven't put any equity into it yourself? Absolutely. So business owners out there make sure that your financial house is in it's order, in order. as far as your business is concerned absolutely yeah and so the next piece uh, the next critical piece mm -hmm. of a business plan is the way in which you're going to execute the dealings of your business right, right. so execution and so that includes marketing and sales for yes. one now when you get into marketing sales, that means you have to have a marketing plan. And how will you attain customers and what simple strategies will be used to right. attract your clientele? Right. So what does that look like? So let's talk a little bit about the marketing component. Mm -hmm. What completely turns you off about the way some businesses market their product or service? Ooh, good question. <laughs> You know, I think the biggest part of it, Tiffany, is mm -hmm. people have to know who their target audience is mm -hmm. because what may work for a millennial crowd, for example, may not work for baby boomers. And so, you know, your your content, for example, on Facebook may be different from your content or, or has to be different from your content on Instagram because there may be two different demographics. So I always tell people look at the insights, you know, change this over to a business account, not a, a personal account, mm -hmm. so that you can view the back end of your social media and see what your target audience is. Because then you can shape your content based on that target audience. Right. So it, it always just kind of gets me, I'm like, this is not the proper platform for that. Right. Um, I don't want to see that. Or maybe too many videos or too many pictures of dogs and cats when you sell something completely different. Show me your product. Right. Show me how your product is going to be beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you talked a little <laughs> bit about social media and the way in mm -hmm. which people show up and present themselves. One of the things that's important to me when I think about the marketing component is uh, making sure that whatever's on on your social media is giving me value yes because research shows that it takes between seven and twelve times for someone to experience you right 
before they even decide to invest mm -hmm. in your product or service. Right. You know, now, of course, you'll have your outliers, people on either end who are going to invest <laughs> really early mm -hmm. or really late. But I need to see that you're providing me something valuable and that you're if you if you are a service organization that you're continuously serving. Exactly. You know, and if you are someone who says you can help me with my business, right. then I need to see you helping other people with their businesses. Right. The messages you know? have to be aligned. Exactly. Right. And I see so many people online with social media mm -hmm. calling themselves business owners and business coaches and whatnot, mm -hmm. and they are not giving no. the best product. Exactly. I mean, so you have to start with giving something. You can't call yourself a business coach. <laughs> then don't you don't give business tips or you exactly. don't you know you what don't exactly provide are you events. Coaching? Exactly. <laughs> what are you? What coaching? are you coaching? <laughs> and that goes back to like what we were saying about yes. just looking at what everyone else is doing. Right. Right. And then deciding that, oh, I can do right. that too. Because Instagram has made coaching a phenomenon. Oh my God. So, yes. <laughs> yes. It's so What saturated. message are you putting out there for your consumers? Absolutely. I agree with that. Right. So, as we move forward with this execution piece and the marketing and the mm -hmm. sales, you also have things like your sales plan um, and your operation. So essentially, just like you said, a roadmap mm -hmm. to um, how you're going to make those sales occur. Right. What's what's the plan inside of there? Right. So finish talking to us about the milestones piece under that part. Well, you have to create benchmarks for yourself, goals, because like we said, you know, we're emphasizing this roadmap because essentially a business plan is a visual aid to give you an idea of where your business is going. Mm -hmm. So if you have some goals in place in a year, I want to hit 500,000 or, you know, quantify that and say, I want to sell X amount of products in, in the first quarter or second quarter or third quarter. Right. You can do that in a business plan and have visible goals that you, you want to reach. Mm -hmm. So definitely identifying what those are and not only identifying them, but how do you plan to reach those goals? Right. And so that brings me into what we all know as SMART goals, mm -hmm. right? So specific, measurable Achievable or attainable, some right. people like to say. Um, realistic right. and time-bound. So you have to follow that whole section as you get ready to make this part of your, your plan, right. right? So when you're specific, that means that you know from A to Z what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And some of us aren't that detailed. Right. So as we're talking about this traditional business plan, you, you, you better be ready to sit <laughs> down for a little bit. Because exactly. <laughs> it's going to take you some time exactly. to pick this and one I out. I was just thinking about that because I don't think people really understand how much goes into it, which is why a lot of people... Well, uh, I guess people do realize how much goes into it, which is why they don't have a business plan. Unless you've never started a business right. before. Exactly. You don't know. Yeah. Because you really have to get down to the details of how your business is going to function. And it just helps you mm -hmm. set yourself up for success. Right. Um, you know, we were talking about the marketing even in that, you know, have a website. Ooh, do yes. not use your <laughs> Gmail address. As oh your my gosh! I think address. yes, that's one of the things that I hate to see when I'm trying to yes. deal with the new business. Such a if you have a piece. Gmail address, I yes. mean, it's necessary for certain things, but right. get, get your business account and get you a business yes. email. It should not be printed on your business card. <laughs> exactly. Like if you took the time to print business cards. Mm -hmm. Set up an email account. Right. A business email account. And I just want to say this: no shade to people who have <laughs> Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> no shade, because uh, <laughs> clearly, you know, Gmail is the most popular right. uh, method of uh, But Gmail email. has a business uh, Gmail, <laughs> yes. <laughs> they have a business suite, absolutely. $5 and, a month, people. Right. $5 a month. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, that's, yeah, that's definitely one of the things that's yes. a little bit of a pet peeve for me sometimes. But with that, going back to what we were talking about with the goals piece, mm -hmm. the realistic part. Absolutely. Um, oh, in, the, in the smart goals section. So, the realistic part means that it's not something that's unattainable or something that you won't be able to achieve within a certain amount of time. Right. And mm -hmm. so, we have to be realistic with ourselves. If you're just starting out in business and you want to saturate your market it's not going to happen overnight it's going to happen incrementally yes right absolutely. so t make sure that you're taking those incremental steps mm -hmm. and if i'm if i want to be an author but i've never been an author before right. 
and I want to self-publish, I can't go and say, oh, I'm going to sell 500,000 copies mm-hmm. in my first six months. Right. There's a lot of work that goes yeah. into that, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and if if you don't even have an audience right. of 10,000 people <laughs> who right. can share, you know, how you're, is that going how's to that going to happen? Right. So and you have to be realistic <laughs> about your yes. goals. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Figuring out what goes into that, too. Absolutely. um, Breaking that all the way down. So what about, okay, I want to start a company. And I know sometimes you you get ahead of yourself in thinking, you know, oh, I want to grow to 500 employees. But you, you still have to think about what your structure is going to look like. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So what do you think about in terms of best practices? You know, for example, when writing a a business plan of mapping out what your team is going to look like? Yeah, so some of the best practices would be... uh it's, as far as mapping out your team, mm-hmm. you have to first start out with what what's essential. Mm-hmm. You know, who are the essential parties? Right. What what persons am I or who am I going to need in order to run this part of my business, right. this part of my business, and this part of my business? And if you're a small business, it's clear that you're starting out small. Right. So you may not even need 10 employees. You might need to start with a virtual assistant. Exactly. You might need to start with one person who can help you on this many things. Mm-hmm. And after you grow out of that, then you can start talking about getting your first employee. Exactly. You know, because one of the things you have to think about with employees is you get into pl- get into paying for benefits mm-hmm. for that employee. Right. You have taxes. to fill out <laughs> yes taxes. You have to fill out uh, some paperwork right. in order for that first employee right. to happen for you. So before you dive into that part, you want to consider. How many employees do you actually need, need to run your business? Exactly. And if you're just starting out, for our listeners who are just starting out, if you are considering hiring folks, mm-hmm. it's great because you want to scale your business. Right. But you want to know that you you have to start somewhere. Right. So I would start, in most cases, start with a virtual assistant mm-hmm. or somebody who can help you X amount of hours a right. week. And that has to be built into your budget. Yes. As a part of your business. Yes. So that goes back to that financial (laughs) piece. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Because you want to set the expectations for what your costs are going to be. Right. Because you have to know, well, what type of profit am am I going to break Mm -hmm. um, at the the end of the year? Mm -hmm. So certainly, certainly a lot to consider there. Absolutely. And so the other piece is your company. We know we have... Uh, the infrastructure of your company that you have to have inside of your business plan. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we return. We'll be right right back. (laughs) And now, back to the show. A homeowner who has been impacted by Hurricane Harvey. In the past year, KYND became one of the fastest growing radio stations in the country. Well, we've outgrown our old home and we're ready to take it to the next level. We are now Synergy Radio. More power. All day, all night. Wait, what? Synergy Radio 1480, powered 24-7. Can I tell you how excited we are? We are powerful talk that inspires change. That's where you phone goes. That's where you phone goes. With transformational coaches ready to help you get to the next level. You will find some things that speak to your soul. Synergy Radio 1480 will continue to bring you all the voices you know and love. Gotta have you here on the Yolanda Adams Morning Show. This is Rashawn McDonald. Welcome to The Journey with Tiffany Smith. Hello, my name is Les Brown. I'm Paris Ely. We're your hosts, Tristan and Cece. This is Oscar Hines. Hey, it's Zakia Larry Live. This is Nicole R. Coleman. Hey, and I'm Tasha Evans. This is the reality check, Dr. Dr. D. Yvonne Young. Welcome back to the show. I'd like to shout out our live studio audience once again. Tune in every day, 1480 a.m. Are you ready for talk that inspires change? Tune in to Synergy Radio 1480 in your car, in your house, or on any mobile device at SynergyRadioNetwork.com. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it.
that inspires change all day, all night. And we are back. Welcome back to the Business Breakfast Talk Show yes. here with Joy Lacey and <laughs> Tiffany A. Washington. We're so glad to have you listening in with us today. Yes. So we want to invite you at this point to start asking us some questions. Right. So give us a call here at 832-230-5592 and ask us some questions. Right. Or you can either join us on Facebook, right? Because yes. we're streaming live. We are streaming so live. Just Look up Synergy Radio Network, yes. and you can find us streaming there. And you can also ask your questions inside of the Facebook Live. So all of you fresh new business owners or existing business owners, if you have any questions about the information we've been sharing about building your business plan, go ahead and type your questions there. Or if you're listening here on uh, 14... 1480, then make sure that you give us a call, 832-230-5592. All right, so we left off with talking about talking about the company and the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we talked a lot about that during our first and second segment. So essentially, what's your ownership and structure going to be? Are you going to be a solitary business? Are you going to be a, a individual business owner? And, and help me with my word right. in here because I can't, <laughs> yes. it's not coming out of my head. A sole proprietor. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. LLC. Yes. You know, what, All what of that. that. <laughs> yeah. It's not coming out of my head this morning. <laughs> I haven't had enough coffee yet. So if, are you going to be a sole proprietorship? Right. Or are you going to be a partnership? Right. Or are you going to have an LLC? Exactly. What is that going to look like? So that's your ownership and then your structure. Right. Are you a company that needs board members, mm -hmm. for example? So is that going to be a part of your infrastructure? Right. Or are you calling all of the shots? Mm -hmm on your own. So those are some of the things that you want to remember when you are building your business plan right. as well. And so we talked about management and the team yes, as, as well, like. what that mm -hmm. looks like. So those are some of the components. So just to review some of the main components of your traditional business plan would be your executive summary. Mm -hmm. And then you also need to talk about the execution process the company structure, and your financial plan. So right. we talked about all of those things in pretty decent detail, yeah. I would say, right? I know it's a lot yeah. of information, but it is it is pretty comprehensive when you break it down that way. And a good way to think about it is always start your business plan off with the problem you are trying to solve. Yes. Because that's what people want to see immediately. If you don't have a problem and if you don't have a solution, we don't have anything to talk about. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Business plan in the trash, you know. <laughs> exactly. And how much is it going to cost that investor? How much money are you asking for? How are you marketing yourself? Because that's really what it comes down to. You, you've identified what you want your business to be, but how is it going to make money? Right. That's, that's what it comes down to. You know, and there are a lot of broke business people walking around yes. here, right? Yes. So if you don't have a clear plan yes. on how you're going to make money, yes. then it may be good for you to stick to your day job. Right. Until right. you figure that out, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> it's okay to have a side hustle. Yes. I don't think, you know, I think society has made people so unsettled in a lot of jobs that they're, they think the only option is to be an entrepreneur. But everyone is not meant to start a business. It's okay to, you know, have a nine to five. It's really okay, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, but I think... You know, we're in this uh, we're in this moment where no, you know, I want to start a business. I I'm, I'm going to have a side hustle, but it's oh, it's really okay. It is because that's the way the economy works and that's right. the way our world works. And mm -hmm. not everybody is meant to quit their jobs mm -hmm. and move directly into entrepreneurship. Right. It is because not for the faint of heart. It's not for the faint <laughs> of heart cuz I tell you, I've had some days. Yeah, uh, listen. <laughs> when you're all alone. <laughs> yeah. And nobody is there <laughs> right. to give you any more money. You have to figure out exactly. how you're going to make it. <laughs> it's like, so these numbers yes. are adding up. Exactly. <laughs> and you'll so, have yes. moments like that even when you have the best of business plans. Yes, you know? absolutely. So you have to be mentally prepared mm -hmm. as well. So before you decide, yes, I'm, gonna, I'm inspired, I'm going to sit down today and start writing this business plan right. out, then you want to think very hard about the cost. Yes. Of being in business absolutely and and when I say cost not just financial but the <laughs> mental cost yeah because the time. yeah the, t the amount of time mm -hmm. that it's going to take and if you aren't able to sustain yourself by maintaining that nine to five right. plus working on your business right. <laughs> then 
you know, what's going to happen when it's time for you to go into right. that Something full time? To yeah, give. because you, there's sacrifice involved. Right. And you have to be willing to sacrifice. Just like you sacrifice plenty of time writing this mm-hmm. business plan, right? And speaking of time. Yes. We're going to talk about, you know, we've talked about how daunting writing the business plan, the traditional business plan um, is. So let's talk about what other options there are. Mm-hmm. Um did you do a traditional business plan or did you have, um, you know, they have what's called a lean mm-hmm. lean business plan or lean canvas uh, type of format. Let's, yeah. let's talk about that because, you know, we, we've talked about all these components. What other options can we give people? And, and we have to make sure that it's also a viable option for them. Right. Absolutely. So the main two are your mm-hmm. traditional versus mm-hmm. your lean plan. Mm-hmm. Now, your traditional plan, it gets you bank ready. Exactly. Right. So if you want to get money from investors. Right. If you want other people to say, yeah, I'm interested in investing in your business, then you need the full-on traditional business plan. Right. It has a lot of moving parts and pieces, which we just discussed in the previous segment, and it's going to take you some time to write it. Right. Yeah. Now, the lean business plan, that's that's my giddy-up right yes. there. <laughs> Because Probably most people. <laughs> right. So the lean, exactly. <laughs> so the lean business p- plan, it really, um, it, it, it highlights that less is more. Yes. So... With your lean business plan, there are only a few components that mm-hmm. you want to hit on. And actually, I, I've, I've written out some of those components. I just wanted to, to say them really quick. So for mm-hmm. your lean business plan, <laughs> essentially all you have is your value proposition, mm-hmm. which we talked about in the first show. So if you haven't caught our first show, go back to that first show. I'll talk in detail about the value mm-hmm. proposition. The resources or the assets that are going to, that are going to help you and your customers Partnerships that you might have, right. uh, activities, meaning what is your business going to do to gain profitabil- profitability, right. the platforms that you're going to use to communicate with your audience, mm-hmm. and your target market, which mm-hmm. is your ideal customer, and any type of customer interaction that you're going to have. How are you going to communicate? Is it going to be primarily through your website? Is it going to be primarily through social media? Right. Uh, is it going to be through a bit brick and mortar and exactly. you just want to make sure that you have face-to-face interaction with your customer and then lastly revenue all the ways that your company is going to make money so it's a conglomerate of all of those traditional pieces mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so i can bullet like i bulleted those out real yes, quick boom, <laughs> boom i'm done it might <laughs> exactly. take you maybe about three five right. hours to write that exactly. versus a traditional plan which will t- you you need a comfortable seat you exactly. need a chair with a cushion in it you <laughs> right. need to take a weekend <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> right. And as you all can see, that was so quick. Like, boom, 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 mm-hmm. done. The the lean, lean business plan is done. And, you know, the thing is, when you're looking at a traditional business plan, although it gets you bank ready, some other things are to consider. As mm-hmm. we talked about the time factor, you're gaining your time back with the lean business plan. A traditional plan, you know, can take too long to write. Mm-hmm. Um, most people do not read it cover to cover. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and sometimes it's often outdated by the time you get done writing oh, it. Oh, that is You know, great. the yeah. data is constantly changing. Mm-hmm. And not only that, it's not necessarily that easy to update. Right. You know, it's like, okay, let me go back to page 15 mm-hmm. so I can update right. this information right exactly. quick. Exactly. Um, so we'll talk more about the pros and cons of the traditional business plan versus the lean canvas when we get back. We'll be right back. All right. <laughs> Hey, hey now, this is Amber Shaw inviting you to join me Sunday afternoons for Unplugged Praise. In the past year, KYND became one of the fastest growing radio stations in the country. Well, we've outgrown our old home and we're ready to take it to the next level. We are now Synergy Radio. More power. All day, all night. Wait, what? Synergy Radio 1480, powered 24-7. Can I tell you how excited we are? We are powerful talk that inspires change. That's where you're going to do. That's where you're going to do. With transformational coaches ready to help you get to the next level. You will find some things that speak to your soul. 
Synergy Radio 1480 will continue to bring you all the voices you know and love. Gotta have you here on the Alonda Adams Morning Show. This is Rashawn McDonald. Welcome to The Journey with Tiffany Smith. Hello, my name is Les Brown. I'm Paris Ely. We're your hosts, Tristan and Cece. This is Oscar Hines. Hey, it's Zakia Larry Live. This is Nicole R. Coleman. Hey, and I'm Tasha Evans. This is the reality check, Dr. Dr. D. Yvonne Young. Welcome back to the show. I'd like to shout out our live studio audience once again. Tune in every day, 1480 AM. Are you ready for talk that inspires change? Tune in to Synergy Radio 1480 in your car, in your house, or on any mobile device at SynergyRadioNetwork.com. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Hello, we are back. And so we were talking to you about the pros and cons of the lean canvas business plan Mm -hmm. versus the traditional plan. And so I definitely want, want you all to think about this. The lean business plan does not mean that you should not also have the traditional plan as a backup. Because, for example, if you are going to a venture capitalist, although they are, you know, quick and dirty, get to the point, they may want to see your detailed plan later. So it's good for pitching purposes. But when you're getting down into the numbers, they will probably want to see some version of a traditional business plan. So just something to think about. And so... We know this is daunting, but first it's good to just start out with putting ideas on paper right? before you actually formulate a plan. And if you do need assistance, there are resources available. Yeah, there are resources available, but before we get to the resources, Mm -hmm. I think that there are some additional pros and cons that are worth exploring. So with the traditional plan, we did talk about it being being investor ready, Mm -hmm. Um, but the traditional plan, it also causes causes you to take pause and really think about your business. Right. And when you write that business plan yourself, it allows you to fully grasp the ins and outs of your own business. Absolutely. You know? So no one should know your business right. better than you do. Right. <laughs> and when you sit down and you at least write the initial business plan for yourself, Mm -hmm. then you'll know that no one can come to you and give you any wolf tickets, if you will. I I, I mean, you know, so I can go old school sometimes, y'all. Don't let nobody give you any wolf tickets. But um, (laughs) you want to make sure that you are on the up and up with the own, exactly, alternative (laughs) facts. Uh, that you're on the up and up with your right. business right. Uh, before anybody else does. Because you, the last thing you want is for someone to be able to, one, poke holes in your business plan, but also 
find holes to take advantage yes, of you. Absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. so one of the one of the pros would actually be because you get that additional knowledge right. about your business. Right. And then um some cons. We already talked about it being really long. I think yes. that you all kind of got that when I say <laughs> get your cushion chairs. Right. And then also knowing that the cons mean that in addition to it being extensive, mm -hmm. You have to be detail oriented. Yes, so if you're not a person who likes to write out details, then the traditional business plan right. may not necessarily be where you want to start. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably want to seek help right. when it comes to writing out all of those details because you really have to dive deep mm -hmm. and dig in in order to create that solid Absolutely. business plan. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it being time consuming right. as well. Right. So um, the fact of the matter is that if you really want a successful business, you're going to have to dedicate that time yes, to, to sit do down and write out. Yeah, you, you have, have to. to. Because are you in it for right now right. or for the long term? Right. Because building a business, guys, is about building a legacy, mm -hmm. not just for you personally, but for your family right. and all of the extensions of you. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know about y'all, but I want some generational wealth <laughs> exactly. up in here. You know? <laughs> So yes. in order for <laughs> us to have generational wealth, yeah. mm -hmm. we have to start with the plan. Absolutely. Uh, and there's a shirt out there that says uh, <laughs> Oprah wasn't built overnight or something <laughs> like that. It's true, yeah, though. It, we yeah. lived in this quick fix society. Yeah. Hence why the Lean Canvas business plan was born. Because of course. Because we need something right now. <laughs> exactly. You know, but it's true. It will not happen overnight. You mm -hmm. have to do the homework. Right. So, I mean, great. I mean, it, it's, it's a great option, but you still have to do the homework. Yeah, yeah. So, what about the Lean? Let's talk about the Lean in depth now. What mm -hmm. are some of the pros of that Lean? Aside from it being a quick thing that you can do. What are some of the other uh, things that are positive about the Lean Business Plan? Well, the Lean uh, Canvas Business Plan is ideal for people who have already flushed out their ideas. Mm -hmm. And so they just need to have that visual roadmap as we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy to plug in, you know, their problem, their solution, how they're going to market their business. So these, these are more people who have already kind of mapped out somewhat of a plan yeah. and they just need to put it to paper. It's ideal for, as I mentioned earlier, venture capitalists who want something quick. You can use it as part of a business pitch, mm -hmm. but again, they may want to see details later. Um, yeah, so I mean, those are those are the primary things I think are, are um, ideal, for uh, the, ideal for the mm -hmm. lean business plan. Also, if you're a bootstrapper, for those of you who don't know yes. <laughs> what a bootstrapper is, that's just the person who is going to take the reins into their own hands. Mm -hmm. They're not seeking outside funding or anything. They know that they're going to build this business from the ground up with their own finances right. and with their own resources. <laughs> so if you're a bootstrapper and you know that your business, you're not seeking that particular type of investment for your business, right. then the <laughs> lean business plan is also a great option for you. Absolutely. However, the lean business plan is not a great option if you know that tra the trajectory of your mm -hmm. company is one that eventually you're going to need investment dollars, exactly. right? So if you want to partner with larger organizations, mm -hmm. for example, because some of us want to partner with large brands, right. they're going to want to see a <laughs> your business. business exactly. Yes, exactly. So it's not just about banks who are mm -hmm. going to loan you money or yeah. venture capitalists. Right. It's also about those partnerships that help to make our personal right. brands stronger. Right. And they're going to want to see some proof. Absolutely. Of what you've been doing. Absolutely. Because they're not, they may not necessarily take the time to go and go back to your first social media post where you first <laughs> exactly. started talking about your business. Uh, but they will look at that your business financials. Plan. Yes. <laughs> all <laughs> look, about the money. It's it, all it, about the money. At the end of the day, that's really what it's about. Yes. Yeah. So we talked about, you know, the pros and cons. So, if one needs help with this, Tiffany, mm -hmm. what are some of the resources that are available? Well, some of the resources largely take place online. Mm -hmm. So you have your small business administration. Right. So let's talk about that real quick. The small business administration, they have resources all of the time. And I also think that they do some live events they do. for um business owners and, and they have physical locations, physical too. locations that you can visit and you can go and get 
information that you need for our areas that you're unclear about mm-hmm. or that you're uncertain about. So Absolutely. I would start with um, SBA online and then venture out from there. Right. So give them a call for your local branches mm-hmm. and see what type of services they provide for those particular locations. And you can actually go in and get some help. Right. Absolutely. Same with SCORE, mm-hmm. which is another resource. They actually provide mentors and people. Your tax dollars are paying for this. Mm. So <laughs> take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah. These are free resources that are available to you. They can help you with the resources that you need to start and run your business. And um, there's also a Minority Business Development Agency, um, HCC here in Houston, um, mm-hmm. which is the Houston Community College, also has resources for entrepreneurs. Um, and what are what about live, like pe- other live um, options? Um, well, you know, there are so many different places. Um, oh, also your Chambers of Commerce, mm-hmm. yes. that's a live option for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can also give you good business sense and business direction with some of the programs that they host on a right. regular basis. Absolutely. Yeah, so there are so many different ways in which you can access <clears throat> information. Right. So what, wherever your local chamber or commerce right. is, that would be one of the places I would And start. there are also templates online, business plan yeah. templates that you can look at um, for guidance as well. Liveplan.com, bplan.com. Mm-hmm. And for that lovely lean canvas, uh, you can go to leanstack.com. Yeah. And also, um, where can we find you, Tiffany? Oh, you can find me. <laughs> At uh, Transformation7.com. But before we talk about that, I wanted to add business coaches. I think that's something that we really need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Business coaches and consultants. Uh, You want to make sure that you have somebody to help flesh out your idea. So if Mm -hmm. you don't have a business coach uh, or a business consultant, then Mm -hmm. you need to make sure that you get one. So. The business coaches help you to flush your ideas, and the business consultants help execute. you to execute exactly. the plan. So there is Please a difference. Know the difference. Know the difference. Because <laughs> there are so. a lot of people out there saying they're <laughs> yeah. consultants, and, and they're, they're not. not. <laughs> okay. okay. So, yeah. So how can we find you, Joy? So I uh, can be found on joyofconsulting.com. Mm-hmm. That's on Facebook and all platforms of social media. Yes. And and Tiffany? Tiffany can be found at, like I said, Transformation. <laughs> 7.com. I actually have a free masterclass, a complimentary, okay. as I would like to say, <laughs> masterclass coming up, and it's going to be on the 24th. And Sunday the 24th at 8 p.m., you're going to find out seven secrets to success in mm. your first year of business. Yes. So if you want to be a part of the transformation on the 24th, join my mailing list and go to my website so that you can get the information on how to get the link. All right. All right. So we've just <laughs> served you up this morning. Yes. I hope people are full from the breakfast that we just gave them. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you awake? <laughs> yes. If you're a champions rise early, guys. So next time you're with us make sure that you bring a friend yes. and the, and you all can uh, have breakfast with us every Saturday morning here at 1480 AM Synergy Radio Network thank you thank you so we'll we will be back with you next week next and Saturday yes 7 AM 7 AM <laughs> see you soon KLVL, Pasadena, Houston, 1480 AM and 95.3 FM. Pearland, Sugarland, Kingwood, Katy, Acres Homes, Third Ward, The Heights, Friedmanstown, Sunnyside, Summerwood, Missouri City, Baytown, Crosby, and surrounding areas. Harvey had strength, but we have power.